EU Competition Commissioner Macarena Vestager has long been a thorn in the side of the likes of Apple, Alphabet and Facebook. Now, she says, her proposals will lay down the law for those companies while finally creating a single market for digital services. She sat down with our reporter, Janelle Dumalau. Thank you so much for joining us today, Commissioner. It's a pleasure. Now, digitalization is, of course, a very important topic in Europe. And with your Digital Services Act, you would like to see a range of rules imposed on big tech companies like Facebook and Google and Apple, rules like making them share their data with smaller rivals. What is it that you think that they're doing that is so wrong? Well, the last time when, when our democracies sort of said things you can do, things you cannot do, that was back in the digital stone age. That was the year 2000. And no one back then imagined what's, what, what would be the case of, uh, of our reality today. So when you then grow up and you become strong, then of course comes responsibility. Uh, and, and we need to say to some of these service providers, you have a responsibility for the way you do business to make sure that people feel as comfortable when they are online as well as when they are offline. Uh, and that, I think, is very important. And also for these businesses, the alternative is that member states, they make their own legislation. You see that, I think, I understand no worries, in so many member states right now. So you have maybe 27 different kinds of legislation to deal with instead of having one European legislation. And since I don't think that it can be any different that legislation is coming now, I think I would still prefer to have one set of rules to, to live by. But can it keep up with the breakneck speed of tech? Well, not alone. Uh, the Digital Services Act will not uh, do it alone. Uh, I also think that we need to say to some of the, the gatekeepers, there's, there are a number of things that you simply cannot do. So to basically regulate from the outset to say, this A, B, C, don't do it. And last but not least, to be able to say, well, we don't want new gatekeepers to, to arise. Uh, we want to make sure that also other digital markets, that they stay competitive so that more businesses have a fair chance of presenting their services to us as customers. But there, isn't there also the argument that uh, it's, it would also serve competition if we were able to have the conditions here in Europe that would create the equivalent of a European Facebook or a European Apple or a European Google? Why don't we have the equivalent of those companies and could regulation be getting in the way? Well, I think we, we've, we failed uh, 20, 10, 20 years ago in providing a real digital single market. Because one of the reasons why the giants are giants today, and that also goes for the Chinese giants, was that they had a single market, they had a giant home market, why they could grow the strength to become global companies. Uh, and this is why one side of things is, of course, for society to catch up with the digital development. But the second thing is to provide a real digital single market also for European businesses to grow and to provide a capital market with sort of more risk taking, uh, for instance, venture capital that comes with capital, but also with knowledge about how to how to scale up this company, because Europe is incredibly innovative. A lot of things are happening, but we need to provide businesses with the market and with the capital needed. Is it your aim to break up these big companies in Europe? And how would that look? By these companies, I mean, of course, the US tech companies. Well, I'm, I'm somewhat reluctant uh, to that idea. Uh, the first thing that would happen would that we would spend, you know, a decade in a courtroom. Uh, the second thing is that we don't know what would be the outcome. Uh, it may be that we just have like more giants uh, instead of having giants that are regulated and that serves their purpose in the marketplace by giving room for others. Um, I know it's very much a US uh, debate um, and these are US companies, but I think a, a proper European approach would be to say, you're more than welcome to be successful. But the thing is, with success comes responsibility. And this is the phase that we're in now to say, well, you have to recognize that you have powers beyond anyone else. And with that comes a responsibility. 
They're also appealing a ruling that saw an EU court overturn your victory against Apple. Apple will now not have to pay back $14.3 billion to Ireland. What's going to be the strategy this time around? What argument will you use? Well, of course, we, our sort of prime thing is that we respect the courtroom. Uh, but also here, respectfully, we find that the general court have made some errors of law uh, that we are then appealing. Um, it is part of the reasoning, it gets quite technical to get into it. Uh, the thing that, that we are very happy with in the judgment is that the courts still say, you can do what you have done. You can use our, your state aid tools also when it comes to, uh, to, to aid being handed out as a tax uh, benefit, uh, and you can do your analysis. Uh, then, of course, agreement stops, uh, but now we'll see what the European Court of Justice will say. Given that uh, this is your second term as the competition commissioner, and you've seen, you've seen some of these setbacks, and we've learned to also recognize as the public how difficult it actually is to regulate very big companies, to try and prevent monopolies. How would you rate your success as a commissioner? Well, as they say, uh, it ain't over till the fat lady sings. And uh, I have four more years to go, so I'd love to pick it up when we get there. Thank you very much. You're welcome.